Okay, this screen flow is just going to cover some of the calculations you would use to make uh, responsive design on the breakpoints in Adobe Edge Reflow. Um, we cover default, we have a uh, small screen, we have sort of a medium or tablet screen, and then we have a uh, small phone screen. Now you'll see here it goes from one column, two columns, and then comes up to uh, four columns. If I just click away from that, uh, you've got those as it moves through and does that. So just some basic sort of working on that as it comes to those points and how you can scale that. Right, so we'll get going, make a new project and see how we can do these calculations. Okay, I'll set up a new um, project in Adobe Edge Reflow. Now the first thing I will do is it does, as a default, give you a 12 pot column structure. That's fine, I want 12 columns, but also I want a margin either side. Now you can do this where it turns a margin on either side here in the uh, grid. Um, I don't sometimes personally find that that useful, and what I tend to do is I just give it two more. So I use two of the columns to create a margin here and a margin on the right. So I use those, and then I've still got my 12 column structure in the middle. Depending on how big your monitor is, this tends to squeeze up and down. And these guides are only as a, you know, as a guide, basically. Um, they do have pixel dimensions up at the top, but they're just to give you an idea of um, notionally where things will be. When you're making things for responsiveness, they should sort of work on many different screen sizes, so everything's not set in stone. Now, I'll bring in some images. So first of all, I'll just come up here to where it's got the tools, and I'll click on the Add Image button. Now I'll go and I'll select an image. Okay, as you've probably seen before, if you've used Reflow, it sticks to the cursor. You move it around until you want to be committed with it and you click it. Now, I'm going to do a number of things on this image now. Over in its layout, it's selected. First of all, I'm going to change the um, width size from auto to percent. The height can stay in auto that's fine and the next thing I want to do is where it says a hundred percent for the maximum width I'm going to come in here and go non otherwise it will sort of stick to that size now down where it's got the margins these have a mixture of percent and pixels so if I just change those two calculations to percent even on the zero ones so they're all in percent now the next thing I'll do is go for one of the corners, bottom right, bring it in, and it it's the column structure, so it's got three columns across that. Now once that's done, I will just duplicate that image, so I'll press Alt and Shift on my keyboard, and drag out one, two, three. So I've done three of them. And you'll see those extra margins, um, margin 14 and margin one, or column one, and column 14 are now working as margins and I have um, my other columns, my other 12 columns for my design work. Right, so once that's done, I can shift click on them all and you can see what the gaps are. There's gaps on here and these, these gaps are slightly a bit different. Um, obviously the one over here, that, that's up there, but the other ones are different sizes so you'll see it's got all those different sizes so we need to get them all the same so if i come over here and where it's got the margins for them and it's got it here for the left margin if i type in 2.4 uh, percent on there and it'll move them all along um, right to the edge that's fine they're all, all, all the same and then also i can put the bottom margin on now these may change as we drag them around but i'll just do that and we've got that margin down the bottom okay once i've done that i will just go up to the top margin which is in percent and i'll do the same for that one okay so it's pushed it away all the same from from all those margins now i'm on to make a container so i'll get a box i click on my box i click here i drag all the way along here to put it on between those two margins and once I've got that I can go down to the percent and I can make it a little bit smaller so I can see everything use my select tool and drag down make it bigger now again I'll shift click my images and I'll drag it 
and drop it again using the column structure to place it on there. Now you'll see it's, it's, it's changed a lot of these dimensions. So I will come along and work with those if I take this up and make it 100%. Now we'll have a look at what's happened here. Now this is in the outline or the layered view or the DOM. You'll see it's got box. Now I'll just rename that box and I'll call it image. Now I want to call it image block. I will name my images so you can come along here. I'll just go along and call this one. Now these can be tricky to pick up. I'm just double clicking on them and pressing the right arrow key and going along and typing in another number. Um, now identifying them all uniquely will help you. You can do some sort of semantic marker, but bear in mind that Reflow is only really a prototyping tool uh, more than something to create proper websites with good code. Now I've set all those up, so that's quite good. Now I need to, with my block selected, and you can see it's 787 pixels at the top. I can see this over here. I can either scrub across and bring it up like that, or I can say I just want 100 pixels from the top, type it in and press enter. Now my box has a height on here. Now if I come along here and say auto, or you can actually come along and, and put on a percent if you wanted to, um, it's certainly up to you, but I'll just leave it on auto. And the width here is 90.17. You can round it down and sort of create it 90 if you wanted. I'll just leave that where it is. So everything's set up with the box. And I just need to shift click my images and set. See, everything is fine here. You'll see up at the top that's changed. I've It's changed to 266. So that's okay for all those but I wanna make the ones at the top the same as the ones on the bottom. So the margins I'll change at the top and type in 2.4% and that will do that. It's on auto, so the box has shrunk to those sizes. Okay, so that's pretty good. I've got everything set up on there. So the next thing I need to do is to put some break points on here. So I start off with my first one, which is gonna be a small screen. I press the plus up at the top and I bring in that breakpoint or media query, and I'll just have it on 100, 500. Now, go back to the default, I click again, and this one, I'll just do it at 1,000. This is just to see how you, you probably add more breakpoints as your design sorts to collapse and breaks up, so that's what you would do, rather than doing just breakpoints for certain pixel dimensions of screens because there's too many of them. We go back here and go back to the default and last I'll just put one at 15 hundred pixels and come back to the default. So that's how you work in, in Reflow. You have the default where you lay everything up, organize things, that's the main sort of document structure and then you would create breakpoints. Now all I've done here is I've created the breakpoints but I haven't told it to do anything yet. Now my first one, I'm just gonna leave that, so my images is gonna be on there, but when it gets to this one, I want it to change to a two column structure. Now, how I can do that is I need to do some calculations on there. So, what I know is I've got five gaps on here. One, two, three, four, five, and all those are two, six, six, right? Now if I wanna go down and only have a two column structure, I'm only gonna have one, two, three gaps, two margins and a gap in the middle and it taking up the whole space of this box. So also I know that my image is 21.67% uh, wide. So I can need to do some calculations here. So I'll just bring up the calculator to give you an idea of how that works. I'll just clear that, make sure it's all clear. Now what I will do is I know the gap size are 2.66 and I only need three of them. So I go three times 2.66 equals 7.98. So I've got 7.98, which I need to now take away from 100. Probably easy maths, you probably do it in your head, but I'll just go for it. 100 minus 7.98. Eight, that will give me 92.02. Now, 
that's the space I have allocated now to my images. I need two of them, so I need to divide that answer by two. So I'll just go, so it's 92.02 .02 divided by two equals 46.01. Now, all I can do is I'll just sort of copy that, I guess, or you can note it down, put it in. Up here, I need to put that in there. So I'll just put that in. So it's going to be 46.01. And you'll see here, it's rearranged it to those sizes. So that's what it's done. So that doing that little maths, taking away the gaps, that has done that for me. Right then. Now, once I've got that, the next thing I'll do is move along to my smaller one. And you'll see it's just spilling over, it's sort of cascading down that style sheet to here. Now we need to give it some other information. I just don't need to have this one column structure right across. So how that's gonna work again, you can do some maths on that. I'll just come along and bring up my calculator. I'll clear all this. What's gonna happen now is I know what the gaps are. So I only wanna margin either side. So I'm gonna go two times 2.66, which gives me 532. I have 100%, I take away 5.32, and that gives me 94.68% for my image. So all I can do is note it down, in my case, I'm gonna copy it. I go over here and change the 46 to that value, and it will do that. So simple way of doing it, once you've got that, and done those points on those issues all the way through. If I click on those images as we go through, it shows you what's changed. That's a purple break point on there, and it shows purple here. If I then move it here, it goes to blue. If I move it up here, I didn't change anything, so nothing's really changed. It's just shrinking down. Go back to the DOM. Now if I press my Tab key, I bring in my image, it shrinks down, keeps on shrinking, gets to about here, changes to this two column structure, I go down, it further shrinks, and then finally it does that. Just gives you a basic idea of you know how that works and how to do the calculations. Be organized, use your grid structure, which really helps. You might find different ways of using the grid. I find this pretty useful here. And then what I can do once I've got that, I'll just select on my box here. I'll just take my margin from the top down a bit. Once you've got something like that, I could come along and say, have a, have a banner going across the top here. Say for example, once I've got that this type of form structure, I'll go over here, I'll just give it a color so you can see what's going on here. Then once I've got that, I will go back to my layout. It is at 100%. I can, again, get that to auto. Click away from it so nothing selected. And when I've got something like this, my margin can go right across the top. So I've got a gap either side. I'll just come back. You'll probably notice I've got a bit of white space. It's two pixels. Here it is, two pixels, and I'll do that. Then I'll just go back again. So you see that sort of margin work, you know, may be useful to you as you bring you know, things down and have them on there okay right there you go hope that you, hope you found that useful it's just a matter of doing some basic calculations you can use a calculator like i did if you're not good with the maths or math um there you go thanks for watching